Hey everyone, I know I don't always do games that are geared toward youngins, little, little children and families, but I think all the games I do introduce are very easily adaptable and or played with 8 to 10 year olds and above. But this video specifically is going to be my experience taking nine games to my sister's family this past week. She has three lovely children. They are all the way from eight to just shy of 13. And so there are three of them. And so I need to keep that in mind when I play games with them is so that we can have enough things to play with. So not just those four player, but maybe even to a five or six player game in case uh, my sister wants to play or her husband, or in this case, my mom was there as well. So we had a pretty lovely packed family time. So I will be sharing those games with you. I was able to pack nine games into Doodle Quest. <laughs> this is uh, the box and Doodle Quest was one of the games. And so I was able to just take all of the other games and squeeze them in here after I took out the insert. So that's part of my strategy with you is telling you about the games that are great for the age group, but also that travel well because of size and weight. Now I wanna to get to something else before I forget entirely because I was just so thrilled to have uh, my sister's family and her children design a tabletop Tolson shirt. So I am wearing that right now and you might see it in future videos. I will show you the back as well. So this is cool. It's not swag for everybody just yet, but maybe someday it will be. So we'll see, but just kudos to my family for designing this and creating such a slick, cool looking t-shirt for me to wear in my videos. So. Awesome, great job. Now, I also want to kind of preview at the end of this video, you will see the games that I'm going to pack for my next trip to see them. Again, keeping in mind, eight to 13 for the age group, the player size, usually four to six, maybe seven players, and the weight and the space that it takes up in my suitcase because again, I travel and I carry on, I do not check. So. That means I have some restrictions, but it's fun to be creative and think outside the box. So let me just tell you what games I took and how well they went over with my nieces and nephew. Firstly, the aforementioned Doodle Quest went over extremely well. Now this one is pretty restrictive when it comes to the amount of players. You can only have four, but the cool thing about this game is how spatially focused it is. What you're doing in this game is you are looking at a picture in the center of the board and it tells you to do something. Connect things, avoid things, circle things, draw fish stencils into that particular picture. And what you're doing though is you're, you're writing it on a transparency and then you're taking that transparency and you're lifting it up to check your work and you're going to put it over the image. So you're trying to spatially figure out where do things go and then everyone's going to get a certain amount of victory points based on how successful they are. It's fun, it's fast, and it's super replayable because there are so many boards. There's also a more challenging advanced board. So I would suggest playing this with um, a definitely eight-year-olds and above. There were two word games that I took with me, Speedy Words and Slam Words. I made videos for those in previous uh, video. So if you need to check those out, you want to figure out how to play them from top to bottom, please check out that video. I will put the link in the description below, but these word games went over particularly well. I, ca I can't tell you enough how many times and how often slam words came up. And I think that might be just the most versatile. And I think also that children like the squishy body of the slam words item because it kind of extends and then it kind of crumps up. And so I think they really liked that texture, but they were so good with those words. And we were doing it all day, day after day, making up words, coming up with all of these vocabulary words and just things that were creative and interesting and unique. So I can't say enough good things about slam words and speedy words. Another game that we played a couple times in a row was Conezilla. And the thing that makes the game good is that it takes a classic old school game like Memory and it adds strategy to it. Now the strategy is that you want to get 10 ice cream scoops 
and you can't go back down numbers once you have taken a certain number. So you want to put scoops on top of scoops that go in ascending order. You want them to go higher. So if I take a scoop on top of my 1 and it's a 10, well, I can't take 2 through 9 now. But everybody else at the table can if they haven't taken, obviously, higher than 10. So you are trying to uh, turn over a tile in your turn, figure it out. Do I want to keep the ice cream scoop or do I want to leave it? And it just goes player by player by player. And you have to remember where the scoops are and how to strategically stack your ice cream cone so that you can get to 10 and win the game. It's a really cool strategy game for young learners to give them that problem solving and critical thinking uh, element to gameplay, which is really cool. I packed Get Bit and then forgot that I already bought that game for them. So we didn't actually play Get Bit because we were playing everything else. But I did pack it and I thought they would really like those little figures and uh, when you rip all their little arms and legs off. It can be a really, really fun game. It can be a fast game. And again, there's absolutely strategy to when you play your card, if you tie, <laughs> where you go in the lineup, and if you're the tail end of the lineup and the shark bites you. It's really cool and strategic. So I like that because it's straightforward and simple, but it's a strategy game and it's fun. It's so colorful. And of course, with the 3D figures, it can just go over extremely well with young learners. I did pack some wallet games and I ended up playing a partner two-player Sprawlopolis. Now I was playing with my mom first and we were going back and forth and having such a good time. We played again a second time, and on the second play, um, my two nieces came over and they were like, I want to play this. So I teamed up with one, and my mom teamed up with the other, and we played a third round of Sprawlopolis. And so it was just so much fun to teach them maybe a little bit more in-depth strategy game with a couple more rules. You have those rule cards that show up, and you have to earn points based on those, but you also get to score the largest group of each uh, like hex or, or territory. There are four different territories and then you also have to worry about the roads and the roads connecting because you lose points for the amount of roads in the game. And so they really were challenged with something a, a little bit harder, but the reason it went over so well is because it was a cooperative game. So again, I can't say enough good things about the cooperative nature of Sprawlopolis and Agropolis. I also played a couple solitaire games and had them come over, my nieces and nephew come over and check out, well, what are you playing over there? So I talked them through Circle the Wagons with Lone Cowboy, and then I also taught several of them the Food Chain Island game, which they got immediately and understood, well, this animal eats that animal, and then they have to do the text at the bottom, and you get your two um, ocean animals that give you those bonus points, and it was just really cool to see them just want to try these games and want to play these games even when they were solo games that I was playing at the kitchen table while we were kind of just in between activities. So overall, the games I brought went over extremely well. Again, I think maybe the star of the whole trip was Slam Words. I would say that one just kept playing itself over and over and over again and they were just constantly engaging and as an English instructor I loved that they were coming up with words and vocabulary and they were communicating and they were spelling things and just loving language. So I really did like that. That was super fun. Um, I also thought Doodle Quest went over really well and that works again those spatial skills. I love the cooperative nature of Sprawlopolis. I would definitely team up and do that to just help guide young learners through it. But after the first time or two and they learn the different cards, they can play it. It, it, it can totally work. So what I'm going to do now is move on to the games that I want to take with me next time and why. Now there are some indulgent games that take up a little bit more space, so I may not be able to take all of these games with me, but I hope I can take most of them because I cannot wait to play more games with my nieces and nephew. All right, so it might look like at first that I'm being a little bit over ambitious with my next trip to see my nieces and nephew, but I will just show you how big all of the games that I packed looked when I packed them into just one box of Doodle Quest. So if I look at this, 
This is what I took. These boxes are pretty big. Speedy Words. These are the four um, wallet games. And then I took this because you can't take it apart. This is Slam Words. But this was the insert in Doodle Quest that I took out and then just packed everything in here in little bags. So Get Bit is in a sack. Speedy Words is in a sack by itself. I put all of these stencils and the erasers for Doodle Quest into this. And everything fit into here, right? So there's this is what I brought and I closed it up and this was perfect, right? Everything was just in here. But I had all of these things that I didn't need. So when I show you my new games, just keep that in mind that it will probably be condensed down because I find ways to do this. I think I packed 30 games one time when Lewis and I went on a week-long vacation and we weren't sightseeing or doing anything like that. We were just getting out of town and so um, I ended up in just one suitcase um, packing a box or two and I had 30 games in there. So <laughs> I'm really good at that. But I'm going to start off with the games that have fewer player count but still are really good games that I'm excited about. Hey, that's my fish. This is one, not one, this is two to four. And so two to four players means that I would play with all three of them, just the four of us, which is fine. Um, but then it means that nobody else can play who's in the house at the time. But Hey That's My Fish is a fantastic movement game where you're trying to eat up all the ice, on the fish on the ice flows. And so it's a fun game, it's a fast game, and the new version of Hey That's My Fish, which is this one, is so tiny. This is all I would need to pack. I mean, look at this. There's the ice flows, here's the penguins. I don't even need this box. So I would take it out, I know the rules, <laughs> I don't need the rules, and I would just leave the box alone. But as it stands, Hey That's My Fish is a super tiny box to begin with. I would take the mind because there's nothing more fun than hanging out with a bunch of kids telling them that you are trying to um, use telepathy to work together to play cards in ascending order. <laughs> That's all the mind is. And it's fun. It's fun with adults. I want to play this as an adult. And this goes two to four as well. It's just cards. It's it's just the cards. So um, that's it. You, I would probably just pack this because it fits in here really nicely. But it's just the deck of cards for the mind. Really, really great game and super replayable. Lastly, I looked through all of the exit games that we have. We have uh, about eight or nine of them up there on the top shelf. This one is the easiest one of them, so it's ranked the, a little bit a little bit easier. And I know they've done these kinds of uh, figure me out uh, game boxes where you have to escape. And so this one looks fun, the Stormy Flight. Uh, it also looks like it might be uh, thematically okay and not like too scary or weird. And so I wanted to do an exit game, which would be super fun for an hour or two. We can have everybody play. It says one to four, but I think this is kind of on the edge where you can really have just as many hands on board as, as possible because then you just figure it out together, which is super fun. Now, similarly with this game, um, another one that says it works more players is one to six. This is Deckscape. Um, and this has kind of like a steampunk Fate of London um, uh, puzzle adventure. And so this game, uh, obviously we haven't opened it or played it yet. Uh, I think even though it says 12 at the bottom, uh, I think this one is the easier of of the the escape rooms for the deckscape, and so that's why I wanted to maybe pack it. Also, it's like super super tiny, so I think we'll be able to uh, definitely use it. Now, moving on to games that are still small but also fit more players. This is five to ten players. Oh my gosh, Fake Artists Goes to New York is so fun. It is so fun. Now we played Among Us, which has an imposter and everyone else is trying to figure out um, who the imposter is so that they can win as the crew. Now in Fake Artist Goes to New York, there's an imposter and it, 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 it has a board game version with drawing as its base element th where everyone at the table wants to figure out who the imposter is. And I think it's so fun and it could really go over super well. So there would be six of us, no, seven of us 
playing this game together, and that's a great number. I'd say play seven to 10. Five is kind of the low end of this game, but I adore this game playing with my friends. And I know the kids would really, really love it. And I think they would kind of in a good way maybe struggle with it because when you're the imposter, you don't know what you're drawing. And that can be really hard. <laughs> that can be really hard to do. So I think they would have a good time with it. I think I would have a good time with it though. So that's why I want to bring it because I want to play games that I want to play. And then they also just suit children really well too. So Catbox is two to five players. And in Catbox, you have a particular color or cat that you're assigned in the beginning. And everyone is going to play cards into a central area, trying to have the most of their color on top of the cards that aren't covered up at the end of the game. And that's it, you just play cards down, it's cool, it's strategy. You also have a, a hidden cat that you're trying to make sure stays on top, but you're covering up everybody else's cat colors. And you might figure out who other people are, but if you don't, you still have a good time. And it's fast, it's fun, and it's super cute. Cat Fox, I'm excited to take this one. And then another animal themed game, um, Pick a Dog. This is one to five players. And in this game, it is frenzied and fast and furious, and it's all about noticing the small details in these cards because there are all these different things that make these dogs look different, but they all look very similar at the same time. So there's sizes, and then there are glasses, and then there are um, popcorns, and all just crazy, oh, uh, the different shading and coloring. And so there's just one card that you have and there are all these cards in a central area and everyone's just kind of grabbing cards all at the same time. And I think they could really, really have a good time with this. And then what's so fun is as you evaluate your deck in front of you, you realize just how many mistakes you made and it could be riotous. So I'm looking forward to introducing Pick a Dog. All right, so the games that have no limit to how many players can play them, um, is probably expected this, but I, I told you I'm an English instructor and I love communication and language and storytelling. Story Cubes, and this is just voyages, uh, could really be super fun when they want to make up stories and just be inspired by the story dice. And so I think this could be a fun, loungy, afternoon outdoor activity we could be out on the back deck and just sitting around telling stories and just swinging on the swing and just having a good time and it could be super casual so it can be laid back but still really fun and creative and academically focused so story cubes really cool now again ooh, this box looks enormous and it kind of is but here's the thing streams is available online for 20 express and that's the name of it. And they have the sheets that you can just print off from the internet so I wouldn't have to take this giant stack of paper. I also wouldn't have to take the pencils because they have pencils. And that means this box with this insert don't need. All I need are these. Look at this. This is the bag with all of the Scrabble tiles. That's the Scrabble tiles. This is all I have to pack to teach them streams and to play streams. Now, in streams, you are placing these tile numbers in order, <laughs> the best you can, into this stream, this line of numbers. They're all blanks at first, but you're filling in numbers every time I draw one. And what you want is a continuous, unbroken, ascending stream of numbers. So when I draw a tile and it says two, there still is a one in this bag. But the likelihood of me drawing a one before the end of the game, probably not likely. So players will put the two where they want, but it's going to be lower down on your stream because as you go, you want your stream to get higher and higher and higher. And the highest number in here is 30. These tiles are really nice. They're like Scrabble tiles. I love them to death. They are so nice and they feel so good. And having the kids draw out of this bag, oh, it's reaching in there. There's more fun than reaching in a bag and drawing out a number. 19. I love it. I just really enjoy pulling things out of bags. So for me, streams, I'm going to put this right here and just prop the lid up because I don't want to take this entire box with me. 
Now, I do have one final, now I could pack all of this in my suitcase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games. Kind of like last time, I got nine games in one box. Here's my indulgent pack. Now, if I have space, I am going to bring with me New York Slice. Now, if you have heard of a game called Piece of Cake, this is piece of cake with just pizza instead of cake, or in that game, it kind of was like pies. It opens like a pizza, <laughs> which is really cool, and it has pizza slices, and I think they'll really like the theme, but this is just a set collection game, and I, it, it needs the whole box. I can't repack this. It's going to take the whole box. But I think they could really, really dig into this and have fun with it. And I mean, we just had a great time on pizza night, uh, Friday night. It was really fun. And so I think New York Slice would be a great game for us to play. It's just heavier than all the other games. It's bigger. I mean, it's just bigger. So I don't know if I can take it, but it's in my pile of games that I'm taking to see my family next time I visit them which should be soon. And again, just thank you so much to them for designing this cool t-shirt. I hope you like it. And I want you to tell me, what games would you pack to play with young kids? I'm talking eight to 13 or 15, because I want to include the kinds of games that I like to play and the games that are in my basement, which these are all games in my basement that I would play. And so I'm trying to introduce those games that aren't necessarily children's games, but they are games that kids can play. What do you think about these games? What do you think about the games that I already took? And what would be in your suitcase if you shared your games with your friends and family? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate all of your support. I'll see you next time.